Aloha. It's October the 28th. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. That can mean only one thing. It's Trump week. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And today's show is titled White House Surrenders to COVID. We're not going to control this pandemic with less. Uh, well, we have six days until the election. I mean, we're finally here. We're in the final stretch. And what we've uh, witnessed and observed from Donald Trump is that he's going from campaign rally to campaign rally and uh, basically instigating a super spreader event. And uh, no matter whether it be in Pennsylvania or Michigan or Arizona or even Omaha, Nebraska, uh, everyone that comes to his events are not wearing masks. And what Donald Trump has successfully done is convinced him that by wearing a mask, the government in some way somehow is trying to tread on you, tread on your individual rights and your right not to have to wear a mask. And that message has been sold quite effectively and quite successful. And as a result of that successful rhetoric of Donald Trump, we now have record highs of caseloads of COVID-19 and over a thousand, a thousand deaths per day in this nation. Congratulations, Donald. You've convinced the nation or at least your loyal followers that uh, wearing a mask is treading on their individual rights and they're dying as a result of it. <clears throat> Donald Trump does not care. He's killing people literally. And uh, at his rally, basically he's saying, it's the Democrats that want to uh, hone in on COVID, 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 COVID. It's the Democrats that are honing in on it and it's needless. The economy's fine. The, the virus is around the corner and it's almost over. And after November 4th, no one will be talking about COVID, especially the Democrats. Well, we know that's not true. We know that Donald Trump is lying in the face of science. Gerald Kushner was uh, recently, uh, uh, the interview was found on April 18th that uh, Jared Kushner was gloating that they had won the day from the doctors, that the, they were going to get the country back from the doctors. And since April, that's been the strategy is ignore this virus, preserve the stock market, and forge ahead. OK, I've said my thing. <laughs> and without further ado, I'd like to introduce our guests. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we have Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, Cynthia Lee Sinclair, and Stephanie Dalton. Welcome one and all to Trump Week. Appreciate you all joining up. Jay, um, let's go to you. We have two candidates with two very, very vast and different approaches to the campaign trail here. Joe Biden taking COVID seriously, trying to protect uh, not only himself, his staff, but also those who come to the rallies, doing everything he can. And then on the uh, polar opposite, viewpoint, you have Donald Trump, who doesn't care about his, his constituents, he doesn't care about those in the audience, he cares about himself, because he wants people around him to wear masks, but not the people in the audience. Uh, given these two very vast different strategies, and how they approach the campaign trail, um, in what reality does Donald Trump's strategy work? It, 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 is it the fact that he's convinced them that wearing a mask is an infringement, an infringement upon their individual rights, and he's won the day on that argument? Well, you know, uh, who was it? Uh, Michelle Obama, who said, when, when they go low, we go high. Well, that's what Trump has been doing. He's been going low. And he's been appealing to people who have no critical thinking and their faulty educations and who believe him, uh, you know, no matter what he says. And it's very troubling here at the last. Uh, I know the polls do favor Biden, but there's a lot of people reflected in those polls that favor Trump and they go low with him. It's amazing to me that a, a grown person uh, could agree with some of the remarkable things that he's been saying at these rallies where thousands of people appear and applaud his every word and don't wear masks. But that's what we have. And uh, it's not entirely clear until next week, maybe, uh, you know, that uh, the Biden will win. I sure hope so, because if Biden doesn't win, we all go low. Uh, I don't know what more to say to you, except that, uh, I, as I mentioned in an email to you earlier, as the most remarkable thing that happened, as far as I'm concerned this week, is when Leslie Stahl interviewed him. And she said, you know, she, she corrected him on every lie. She wouldn't let him get away with anything. I hope everyone saw that, that segment. It was remarkable. But the one thing that, that happened that was extraordinary was 
She said, I don't know if you remember, but uh, I asked you one time uh, why, you, why you call the, uh, the press fake and enemies of the people. And he said, she said, she recalled that he said, I do that because I want to discredit you so that you will not be credible at the time you criticize me. And that, that's, that's a complete demagogue. That's what yeah. we have. You know, and, and Jay, when she brought that up during that interview, the 60 minute interview, that was the point where he got very upset and agitated and um, was on the way out the door. As soon as she brought that point up, you could tell a marked uh, change in his demeanor. And she really, she really got under his skin with that comment and you know, how she presented that. Yeah. Well, I think what we have here is a, a real conundrum because we ask ourselves this question every week, if not more than once a week. Uh, how come anybody would support a guy who goes low like this? He's all about criticism. He's all about the worst things in humanity, dividing and hating. Uh, and yet there are people who support him and, who, and pe who will vote for him, who have voted for him. And so the big question left for us this week and next is how many of those mail ballots favor Biden and how many favor Trump? And, and will the Biden people who would like to go physically and vote because it's too late already, according to the post office, it's too late to send your mail ballot in. Um, and they go to the polls. How many will go to the polls because of the spike and the surge? Some of them won't go, sorry to say. And so I think the, re the, re the Republicans have a kind of advantage on election day and it's not clear what's gonna happen, I'm sorry. Are you impressed with the turnout? Thus, thus oh far? yeah, so far, absolutely. Yeah. And most of that mail, mail turnout is gonna be uh, Democratic. Yeah. Uh, okay. The question is, what is what? What do the Republicans have up their sleeve, and what does Trump have up his sleeve? Don't forget, the Supreme Court ruled against um, ballots that that come right. in after midnight on election day. I That's thought correct. that was a really awful ruling, and it and it, uh, well, it 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 suggests that as we go forward, the Supreme Court is compromised, is corrupted, and will will rule for him on a political basis because that was a political decision, not fair, not constitutional, not respectful of the public. And, and I think we have, we already have a, a, a pretty good handle on where they're going and it ain't good. Well, I think that uh, that kind of decision, plus Donald Trump's words about, uh, you know, mail-in ballots earlier on has uh, basically incentivized those to get out of their armchair and go to the lines, wait hours and vote. Uh, really. I don't think that would have been the case had Donald Trump kept his mouth shut, but because he couldn't, <laughs> and it's not in his nature to keep his mouth shut, we now have record turnouts. And I think that's gonna work against uh, Donald Trump, most certainly. The numbers are uh, what, 60 million voted, but the entire electorate is something in the order of 150 million. So the fat lady has not yet sung. That's correct. All right, thank you, Jay. Hey, Winston, are you surprised that Mark Meadows candidly stated that we are not gonna control the pandemic? And um, to that effect, not really defend much past it. I mean, they've said, well, what, you took me out of context a little bit, but they really haven't um, vehemently denied that comment or that approach. Were you surprised at all that he said that candidly? Uh, yes, but also, it, 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 yeah, just getting something honest like that was, was reasonable. And it lets you know what uh, we've been saying here all along on this and, and on uh, Corona Bill. Uh, that this is all left up to the states, that, that they've given up any pretense of control, I think, at this point. It'll just be maybe some uh, spot fire putting out, uh, closing down places that are becoming overwhelmed. But, um, you know, this is our last week where hopefully we have, to, we have to have this administration lying to us or questioning everything that they say. Uh, obviously, if, uh, you know, Hopefully, our, our fellow countrymen and women will decide that, that we absolutely must have change to save and salvage what is good and decent and right about this country. And we are more alike than we imagine we are. I think it's easy to, um, to put us into the, uh, the, the partisan labels. But in fact, we're, we're closer than we realize. We've just been bamboozled for so many years now that it's hard to pull back from that. But um, these are you know our, our fellow countrymen and women. and they hold goodness in their hearts. And I think that enough people will say, you know, we can't take it anymore. And they will, they can go and vote for Joe Biden and lie when they come out and say, yeah, I voted for the Donald. That's fine. It doesn't really matter as long as the end effect is here. And I am guessing that we're going to see 
resounding victories state by state as it falls throughout the nation. It's not going to be uniform. There's certainly going to be um, areas that don't go. But most people, I think, will have said, I've had enough. The nation is not better off than it was before. My family is more fractured. My work environment, uh, you know, the virus, whatever it is, um, uh, I think they'll, they'll make that yeah. decision. To vote with their I, I, I think what I'm seeing on the campaign trail, again, is that air of desperation from Donald Trump. And it's becoming more and more evident that he's desperate. I mean, for example, when he's accusing medical doctors of profiteering from COVID on the campaign trail and not talking about policies or a vision of the next four years, but that's all he can uh, basically throw his anchor on is uh, accusing doctors of profiteering. Uh, are you surprised by that at all? Um, no, it, it, he, he says so many contradictory and stupid things that it's, it's hard to, to watch, but there's a documentary um, called Totally Under Control. It tells you exactly what happened. And as this has unfolded, um, you know, there's another thing where, where Mary Trump asks uh, the psychologist to, to weigh in and say, he is not well and we need to understand what does this mean? Psychiatrists, let them tell uh, what's wrong with my uncle. Uh, psychiatrists, no, I'll let them tell voters. That was in the Washington Post. Um, I thought some other things that, um, we're more, um, I, I love the, the article by uh, George Conway, which was, I believe in the president now more than ever. That was also in the, in the post, not that we only go to the post for our uh, information. We have plenty of things, but he signed an executive order letting him purge thousands of federal workers for disloyalty. This is kind of scary stuff, reaching down into the, um, uh, into uh, you know, what, how our, our very government functions. Um, but uh, we have other things, Facebook and other things. They said it's they're preparing to treat the U.S. like a failed state for the election in that they're going to watch who posts what. They're not going to announce early um, election results and all of that. Um, there's some other things that, that were scary. You know, the EPA uh, canceled a, uh, a diversity training due to a um, an executive order that bans uh, diversity training based on race and yeah, sex in other categories. I have to so, agree with you that his his, his <clears throat> points of being bizarre is incredible and it's it's noticeable. And I think that's what is driving more people out of their armchairs and register for the first time and perhaps even vote for the first time, particularly you know, the younger vote. I think so, the one thing that I, kind of visually the the most shocking thing was him standing with Amy Barrett. Um, yeah. That was a bad move on her part because, and it was sort of, she was just sworn in by Clarence Thomas and then stood with him next to him like, this is the man that appointed me. It gave a very, whether or not it was- Well, you never, uh, you never have those things at the White House event. That's always at the never Supreme have Court. That. And, and it just reminded me, it's almost as if she's um, appearing as his running mate. If I didn't know better, like yeah. here is this woman, this white woman that I've chosen who represents your values and she's on display right here at the, at the White House. And I, I just thought that was very troubling of her. It was, it was, a, it was a disturbing uh, image. Hey, um, okay, thank you very much, Winston. Stephanie, is Joe Biden hitting the right notes on the campaign trail? And to add on to Joe Biden is, is uh, Kamala Harris. Are they hitting the right notes, uh, particularly regards to um, their defense of their position of being safe for COVID and pushing a national agenda to address COVID versus the um, missing strategy for COVID under the Trump administration? Yes, yes, and yes. I, I yes, cannot yes, and yes, okay. <laughs> the complete and total uh, uh, satisfaction and peace I felt actually this morning listening to Biden's uh, latest comments. He reflected my values. He reflected the priorities I, I feel as the voter I am, uh, I Democrat and for democracy, I, I felt so good. And I'm just holding on to that, along with the fact that um, the really only good positive news we have about Trump's situation is that he is out of money. Okay. 
And it doesn't look like he's going to be writing his own checks. And it doesn't look like anybody else is writing any big checks on him. So I think that we do have that to hang on to. Otherwise, as you all are saying, it's a complete uh, crapshoot uh, because we don't know who all these people out there are. And Miss Kitty, that's now on the Supreme Court for getting all our guys back into the wet, wild west where they can have as many guns as they want, as many, but you know, no regulations for damming up the only river coming down between our branches. So, I mean, all of the those things uh, I'm, I'm able to, to set aside because of what it is that Biden said that reflected my values. And then the same with Kamala. Uh, so, but I've seen him more and worried more about him, of course, because he's the, the, the candidate and uh, he's, he's surpassed my expectations because he does crunch a, a lot of words sometimes and he has stumbled, but he's not, he's, he's, he's on, he's actually on the themes that are really important to those of us that I think are. Yeah, the, I, I no longer curl my toes when he gets to the podium. I, I think that he does have a command of what he's trying to say and he's, he's well rehearsed and he's actually able to speak, um, you know, on the stump as well. So um, my Pretty curls of uh, my toes are not, no longer curling. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying because I know he's, but anyway, because that's not his strength is being no, up. No, it's not, yeah. Who's hysterical and wonderful to watch. So that's okay. not, his strength. unfortunately, that isn't that important. I don't think in this, in this round of the election. So let's go. Alrighty. Thank you. I yeah. want to, um, Cynthia, are you there? I'm here. Great. Same question to you. Are you, uh, tell me how you're thinking about the, the, the right notes Joe Biden and Kamala Harris is um, hitting. And also talk a little bit about your observations about uh, Barack Obama on the trail. Well, I loved what Barack Obama did and said in Florida. It was so fabulous. And it gave me hope, you know, it made me go, oh, that's what a president's supposed to sound like. Oh, yeah. And, and knowing that Biden was exposed to that for so many years, too, and then his own moral compass makes me really trust him. And, and I think a lot of people feel that. And like you said, our toes are all uncurling, right? Because <laughs> we're not so um, worried about will he, you know, trip up on his words or really, he's doing awesome. But, okay, and this is a big but, you guys, and it's something you hear from me all the time. I've done a little more research. I found seven states that do not have paper ballots to go along with their electronic voting, okay? Those yeah. states are the states we need to watch. And of course, I left my notes in my car and didn't have time to go get them before I read had to sit down for the show, sorry. But I do know there are seven states that are not gonna have paper ballots. Are they swing states? Yes, they are. A couple of them are. Some of them, a couple of them aren't, but a couple of them are. And I know it's like Nebraska and I think Wisconsin, Illinois, Ohio was one of them though. That's a big one. Um, but I don't think it, it wasn't like Arizona and Iowa and Florida. It wasn't so do you predict, what's your prediction? Do you think uh, Biden gets in by uh, a hair on this election or does he lose or is it going to be a, a blue wave? I think it's going to be a landslide. For a landslide, Joe. okay. I don't believe that we are going to get to know that it was a landslide. All righty. Um, we've got, you know, who's a Kavanaugh came out this week and made a, a statement saying that he, they are going to throw out as many ballots as they can. He said that. So we know for sure that the Supreme Court is already set to throw out as much as they can. And, and of course, you know, when they throw it out, they'll go, oh, this is Trump, we'll keep well, this. Do you agree with Winston about the appearance of Amy um, Barrett at the White House being sworn in, and that's the wrong image and visual? Does that actually motivate people to say, that's not right, I'm going to vote, uh, and I'm going to make a difference with my vote? Does I that help at all? Did, did that visual, um, motivate people. I yeah. think that everybody, uh, all the Democrats for sure, and independents also, anybody that's not in his base, see this whole entire appointment as a sham, as a travesty, as a borderline 
you know, illegal anti-democratic process that they have just done. And so I think it shines a light on, on just how corrupt this administration is. And so I think that part was good, but we have to remember that we have to look more than just who the voters, because there's more going on than just the voters in regards to this election. And I don't hear enough people talking about it. We hear a few, you know, pundits that will come out and say, well, we know about Ivanka's, you know, trademarks for voting machines. We know about this, you know, little tiny bits and blurbs, but we don't hear the main people. Well, don't you think that'll be an issue if there is a contested election? And, and until that point, people just don't think it's newsworthy. Well, I don't know if they don't think it's newsworthy. What I'm thinking is that they might be waiting because if they can catch him cheating, then the whole thing goes out the window. But if he knows they might catch him cheating, then he's going to cover his butt and they won't be able to catch him. You know, just like a, a police sting or an investigation, right. you don't tell what you're going to do beforehand. So All maybe right. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that's what's going on. I'm hoping for your, you're hoping. <laughs> Okay. Hey, Jay, um, here's a question. With the uh, nomination and the putting uh, Amy Comey Barrett into place on the Supreme Court, same question to you, Jay. Does that actually motivate people to say that that was uh, kind of a rigged selection? It was uh, hypocritical to do so, and I'm mad as hell, and I'm not taking any more, and I'm going to register and vote? Um, that, it would have that effect on a lot of Democrats. I'm afraid it would not have the same effect on the Republicans of the base because they'd say, well, looks like he got it done. We wanted him to get it done and he did it and he did it before the election. We got to give him credit. This is going to affect policy in this country uh, for our lifetimes and beyond. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, I would say it's, uh, it's, it doesn't change too much. People yeah. who don't like her will continue and the people who like her will continue. But one thing I Look noticed, though, and I want to add this, you know, a lot of this is really not about policy. It's about who do you like? Uh, a lot of this is about, you know, the gestalt, the personality aspect of it. After all, politics has become personality, as it, just as with him in, in, in a certain sense with her. And um, I, I find her humorless. I find her young looking and all that. Um, she is young, um, but I find her humorless. She doesn't, she doesn't appeal to me at all as a person, as a personality. Uh, I would much rather see, uh, even if it was on the conservative side of things, somebody who had a sense of humor, somebody who was, you know, was, was like human. She looks like she's possessed uh, by him. And that, that would trouble me even if I were in the base. Yeah. Let me, let me throw something past you. And I've been, it's been on my mind. You know, everyone's concerned about how this is now stacked and it was, you know, maneuvered, manipulated by McConnell. And uh, what's to prevent after this election, the Democrats to take the Senate, the Democrats to retain the House, you have a Democratic president, and you legislate things to protect the Affordable Care Act or any other um, law in jeopardy on the books that's in jeopardy, and legislate a foolproof, non-legal challenge law so that it doesn't go before the Supreme Court. What's to prevent that from happening? Not a thing. Don't uh, you think that's the alternative? Then don't, don't, don't you think, think that's the alternative than stacking the court even further after the election? No, I like stacking the court too. We've got to prevent this <laughs> from ever happening, you know. And if I was in charge of uh, two houses and the presidency, I would be taking all all kinds of steps to make sure that this never happens again. We are victims of demagoguery of the first order. This is a, a low life administration. And well, we I'm going to take issue with sure. you, Jay. I'm going, to, I'm going to argue against that because I grew up saying two wrongs don't make a right. And it wasn't right for the Republicans to install her post haste. And I don't think it's any right. It's, it's not right for us to expand the Supreme Court. Let me add this, Tim. And that is, uh, if you think, because the Democrats have um, two houses and the presidency, uh, they can run things right through and have anything they want or a combination of all the things they want. Think again. Um, you still have the base. You still have Trump himself, not in, not in the presidency, but you have a lot of Republicans out there who will fight like hell to stop the Democrats, even though they control things. If you think the Democrats were squawking about all these things that Trump has done, they've been relatively ineffective. 
the Republicans may not be so ineffective, even as a minority. And I think it'll be a fight to regain environmental regulations, reasonable health policy, all those things, even to deal with COVID. They'll be fighting like hell on everything. So it's not as if the Democrats can walk in and fix everything. It'll take them years to fix things, and they will be fighting about everything. They'll have to All right. the Republicans will fight with them. Great point. Thank you, Jay. Winston, same question to you. Um, can you solve this by capturing the Senate, retaining the House, and legislating good law, well-written law, so that's not challenged by a lower court or end up in the Supreme Court? Well, uh, flash news. 538 comes out and he says they have run the election simulations 40,000 times uh, and they say Biden wins 88 and 100 times. So that's pretty good odds. Uh, and that's uh, where he's winning 88 and 100 times. All right. I so back to the question. To, Thank you for the update. What we have to look at is, is uh, the damage that has been done in the last four years, the undoing of our norms, our values, our laws, our regulations everything that um, that has been done will not be miraculously reversed overnight. And because, as Jay said, there are 40% of the people in this country who are still supporting this, I think, though, that once Donald Trump goes away out of the office, now he's certainly going to start Trump TV. That's a given. Uh, he's going to have his nightly show on every night. But you know what? People are going to start to get tired of him after they realize the failures of this administration. And as it comes out, and as people are not af uh, afraid anymore of coming out and saying, hey, this is what we experience. Here's the real truth. Here's the memo. Here's the email. Here's the this and the that. At that point, then we're going to see the damage. Um, now, will people view it as partisan or whatnot? I don't know. But uh, Joe Biden is going to be the president of all of America. He's not the president of the red states or the blue states. Like Donald Trump was said, he's, you know, he was president of some of America. But Joe Biden will be president of all America. His challenge, as you say, is how do we legislate these things? How do we get them into place and, and get these safeguards so that this can never happen again, so that someone like this can never happen again and also flaunt everything from the, the Hatch Act to, uh, to having a cabinet of, of acting a point, I, I, the whole nine yards. How do, we, how do we get those norms legalized now so that this just doesn't happen again? Those are really good points. And as far as the Supreme Court question goes, it's already stacked. Right now, you've got a uh, six to three, uh, which we shouldn't be looking at this the court like that, but that's how it is. Uh, let's see how they come out and they realize, okay, we they can't get ahead of the public. They did that, uh, I think, uh, a few times and they realized that was a mistake. I would posit, though, also that expanding the Supreme Court at this point would be detrimental to um, to to our nation right now, unless we see that this is just totally- Wouldn't it further unfair. polarize this nation? It would further polarize the nation. And I think that the court is cognizant that it cannot get uh, that far ahead and outside of public opinion, uh, and that they just need to let things sort of rest for a while and see, take a pulse again, um, you know, in a few years. But if we find that everything is thrown up again, like Jay said, that uh, that that we may, that might have to be revisited and say there does need to be a rebalancing or maybe it's term limits or something because we can't have um, a court system that does not reflect the will of America, just like we can't have presidents that are elected that, that aren't in the majority of Americans' opinions Alrighty. like we've had happen in. All right, we're almost out of time, Winston. I've got to go to Stephanie real quick. Stephanie, oh. we're almost out of time. Um, your predictions between now and election day, please. I just want to say really quickly, Joe Scarborough wrote a fabulous article and it's about the Supreme Court numbers and there is no established number and the numbers have gone from three to 13 over the years. There hasn't been a recent addition, but there is absolutely no reason why the court cannot have Same more question to you then, same question to you. Wouldn't that polarize this nation even further? Well, no, that's the least of our problems. And the other, the other, the good news, as I said, is that Trump's out of money. The bad news is he's walking around with the nuclear codes. And if he's going to go to Armageddon during the next period, that's one of the places nobody seems to be preparing. There, there doesn't need to be any permission or any consultation to, to punch any of those buttons okay. and off a mess. All right. Thank you. We're out of time. I'm going to go real quick to Cynthia. Cynthia, your prediction between now and next week. 
Oh, remember I've said once we back him into a corner, he's gonna get more dangerous. So I believe he is more dangerous. I I appeal to everyone out there, if um if you hear him say something, use the projection model and see is he really saying it about someone else or is he saying it about himself? And when you use that sort of projection lens on everything you hear. It, it takes a whole new meaning and it helps us be safer. Instead of following the shiny objects, we look at, oh, wait a minute, that's what he's doing. And so I would, I would like to hope that people would do that. Okay, be, thank you. Be careful. It's thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna get the last word here is, you know, this is a, a show of commentary. It, it is not a true news show, as we all know. It's called Trump Week. And we, we opine, we give our commentary. So given that as the background, I hope everyone gets out there and votes. And quite frankly, I hope everyone gets out there and votes and votes Trump out of office. And remember, no vote, no grumble, as the bumper sticker says here in Hawaii. I want to thank Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, Stephanie Dalton, and Cynthia Lee Sinclair for joining us. The next time we'll be on the air will be the day after the election. I'm pretty certain we'll have plenty to talk about. And aloha to everyone. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. See you next week.